Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Liberty Report. With us today is Chris Rosini, our co-host. Chris, welcome to the program. Great to be with you again, Dr. Paul. Good. We'll talk a little bit about politics here, a little bit about mm-hmm. lying, a little <laughs> cheating. That happens every once in a while in politics, but we still have to talk about it and uh, alert the people to what's happening. But uh, we, we had a headline today that got our attention. And uh, it says, U.S. accuses Russia of spending millions of dollars to influence the American voters in the election. Would they do such a thing? Those Russians, boy, we have to expose them. And, uh, but they've been in the news before, I, I think. Maybe they uh, were involved in some of these controversies before. But with just a meager amount of uh, investigation, in spite of all the cover-up, we find out that there were a lot of lies told, especially ever since 2016. Uh, Hillary was involved in several of these, and it, it continues. And uh, w- one thing that is happening right now is the D- Department of Justice you know, is coming up with the same old stuff. I mean, where, do, where are they going to get the gullible people? I just hope the people wake up and say, we heard this story before. And therefore, we're not going to pay any attention to it. And uh, the Russians, yes, maybe they did use somebody to, uh, to persuade people. And uh, they, they should, that's not nice. They shouldn't do that. But compared to what? Mm-hmm. C- compared to the par excellence of interferer in, inter- in, in foreign elections, that would be our CIA. Just think of the millions of dollars in their connection with the social media and our major media and how they coordinate so many reports and they continue to do it. So there's the whole fact that, uh, you know, uh, advertising, uh, they they say the uh, Russians did some of it. I I think they're sort of bored with this and I uh, don't, uh, because the evidence has never shown up. Every every time they investigate it, they find out they've been lying about, you know, how bad the Russians have been. But we can't say that because we'd be unpatriotic if we said our government's doing something wrong, that they start these problems. And still you read in the paper constantly and constantly, the Russians invaded Ukraine, Russians you've invaded Korea. We would have had any problems there. But they don't talk any anything at all about NATO and some other things. So, so it's the whole system is built on lies, and and that is a problem because uh, uh, right right now you know we're getting close to election, and uh, who, who's going to uh, who's going to start criticizing uh, you, you know the government for pointing out how bad the Russians are. Uh, but I always want to say, compared to whom? <laughs> and I would say interference in foreign elections, uh, nobody even comes close to us. That doesn't mean that the Soviets and some Russians weren't involved and they were very vicious. But this, I don't, I just can't get the fear built up into my system like it was when I was uh, drafted into the military and the Soviet system was alive and well and alive and well and there were missiles in Cuba and the Vietnam War was going on and all these all these pro- terrible problems going on. I think things are di- different now, but in many ways, in one way a little calmer, but uh, fundamentally much worse because we're so involved and we're facing the bankruptcy and it's all coming together. So once again, Chris, I see this as just more mischief and, uh, and all the other problems seem to be discovered, you know, a, a couple, well, they would know about them, but they wouldn't let the cat out of the bag. But uh, it's not during or prior to the election. It happens afterwards. So they're coming up with this now and, uh, and they, they say they have the evidence. Department of Justice. I, I'd like somebody who really is honest with themselves to tell me why we should believe the Department of Our Justice, our Depart, uh, you know, you know, our FBI, our CIA, and our, uh, you, you know, our, our individuals who are supposed to take care of us and protect our leader, Secret Service. They, they're they're a great secret organization. They do such a great job. So I I see this is more more mischief and. Uh, it uh, it means that uh, we hopeful uh, we hopefully 
uh, see uh, more people come out and say, beware, beware, we've had this scene before, we've had this, it's over and over again. And just remember, criticizing one's own government is not, you know, automatically being unpatriotic. It may well be the patriotic position to take. Rick, well, that's right, Dr. Paul. If we're American citizens, it is our job to criticize our government, not be worried about everybody else, because it is our government that takes away our liberties, that taxes us, that regulates, you know, all the things they shouldn't regulate. So it is our duty to be critical of our own government, because when they abuse power, who's going to do it? The Chinese? Are they going to stand up for us? No. We have to stand up for ourselves because power corrupts. But yeah, Dr. Paul, you make a great point. Who's left to believe this stuff anymore? This is the third election in a row with this Russian disinformation stuff. You know, when Hillary lost in 2016, she couldn't just lose. No, it was Putin that did it. Putin and Russia. And boy, did we just get bombarded for years and years of that nonsense that turned out to be false, of course. And then the last election was really bad. That was with the Hunter laptop where the 52 intelligence people signed that letter saying it was Russian disinformation. It wasn't. And, uh, you know, Americans, people were censored over it. It was, it was a hidden. Uh, even, I believe, Mark Zuckerberg admitted to Joe Rogan on his show that he was put under pressure by the FBI to hide the story. And, uh, you know, people were censored. Again, in the land of the free, this wasn't COVID, this was the Hunter laptop. They're just censoring. If you have anything that's true, that goes against what they want, you know, their lies, then you're going to be censored. It's terrible. Uh, you know, we have big problems here. We're worrying about Russia. Uh, so, yeah, this is the third time in a row that they're meddling in, quote, unquote, our democracy. And I think Biden said something about sanctions again, which... Sanctions have done nothing all this time to Russia. They're pr prospering with the rest of the world, trading with others. We wasted $200 billion of our own money on a failed war in Ukraine. So government is doing what governments always do, or at least ours. If it doesn't work, just do more of it. So we're getting Russiagate 3.0. You know, I, I want to review uh, a little bit of the news that came out in 2016 and 17. And if you go to the Internet, there will be a lot of articles, but most of them are still defending Russia, uh, uh, defending the United States against Russia. Russia was at fault, you know, all, all that nonsense. And uh, but I did find one that I happen to uh, sympathize with. And uh, I think it's an eye opener. And this was written in 2022 uh, by the New York Post. It says the FBI knew Russiagate was a lie, but hid that truth. Oh, well, now that's serious. It's probably true. The more we information we get, and the more tr truth that comes out on this. And you mentioned there were three times now in these last several elections, and it's the same story. I just can't believe that their idiocy and their corruption is willing to put that out on the table again, believing that people are so gullible that they'll believe a lie a hundred times. I guess, you know, the old saying, keep telling them, make the bigger the lie, the more likely it is that it'll become the truth. So they're at it. But I want to read just the first paragraph of that article in 22, trying to tell, what's go uh, what, what, tell us what was going on. It starts with, the FBI knew the Trump-Russia collusion narrative was, <clears throat> was utter bunk, even as it suggested otherwise to Congress. Uh, they would do that to Congress, the FBI? Well, well, I guess they did. The courts and the public early in 2017 came and did that. Evidence revealed by special counsel that John Durham proves it beyond dispute. And they go on and explain what happened. But it happened, to, they, they got to that evidence, uh, not, uh, well, the, some of the evidence was available before the election, but anybody that said that were absolutely unpatriotic, ignorant, and just looking for trouble and defending those Russians. So that not now it's a little safer to write about history. A lot of times I think, well, why worry about it now? It's over and done with, and they stole the election. You can't do anything about it. But my, my attitude now is that record everything. 
even if you recorded a month after the election or even after they got so-called got away with it, we have to at least put it down and the people that the whistleblowers coming forth and put it in, in publication. But the whole thing is whistleblowers now are they've turned that word into most people think whistleblowers are, you know, evil people. But to tell you what, more and more people are picking and choosing uh, to, to which uh, whistleblowers will believe. And that that uh, process, I think, is very, very crucial. Right, Dr. Paul, yeah. I wanted to, to, to make a comment about that last election. I think that was a monumental election, kind of like with COVID, how, you know, science and doctors, they really took a hit, legitimately so, you know, because they are not viewed today like they were prior to COVID, and rightfully so. I think the same is with the election of, of that, that last one. You know, it shattered a lot of illusions, at least in my experience in my life with the people I know that I don't really talk politics with. It shattered a lot of illusions about American elections. And I can't tell you how many times I've either read online or heard people talking that they're going to just cheat again. How many times have we heard that before this election? So. Our elections are not so pure and pristine that they have to be protected like a little egg from Russian uh, interference. Our elections are messed up pretty bad, you know, but they want to deflect. It, it can't be us here. It's them over there, you know, thousands of miles away. And, you know, today, uh, Putin even publicly made it. I think it was today, today or yesterday, but I saw the video today. He made a joke that I wanted to read. And, you know, it just shows what our democracy, it's, it's a joke, you know, uh, even around the world. Here's what he said, quote, if we can name a favorite candidate, it used to be Joe Biden, but now he's not participating in the election campaign. And he's recommended to all his allies to support Miss Harris. So that is what we are going to do. So he's saying the Russians are going to support Harris. He's obviously trolling us, us, our, our government. It's it's a joke what's going on, you know, and we're just reporting on it. I don't know what the solution is here, but it's not good. No, but we have to keep searching for it. And, uh, you know, we complain a lot and we're justified in doing that on how disruptive the uh, system is and how people use the media. But I, I think they've been doing that for a long time. But what... Uh, what we, do, uh, what we should point out also that we're still able to use the media to our benefit and I think we can get more attention because when people say, you know, all I want to hear is the truth, that I think they sense that when they turn into our program, that we don't pretend we know everything, but we tend to think that working to finding the truth is most important, especially in foreign policy. Think of all the mistakes that we have made and all this nonsense in Ukraine, all the nonsense and lying about the monetary system and, and, and trying to fluff over it. So I think that uh, we can get that information out, but it's been able to before because at the beginning of, of our, our country, it was done by just writing pieces of paper and spreading it around because ideas are important. And right now, more and more people are uh, looking for the answer. Yesterday, we talked about how, how uh, the dumbest thing in the world was all the Republican leaders and Democrat leaders were saying, oh, don't let, uh, you, you know, what we have to do is uh, make sure you, you, you know, that uh, we don't allow a foreign co company uh, to buy U.S. steel. And of course, yesterday we pointed out, you know, there's tremendous benefits from it. They've accumulated dollars. They sold us stuff. They're investing back here. And they even wanted to buy up a plant that needed some help. And it turned around that for the superficial nonsense in the political system is showing, oh, no, that's that's protect. You know, we, we have to protect our workers. And so both unions and business people went along this and they say, let's close it down. And today we hear the president will abso absolutely, you know, prohibit that. You say, well, maybe next year we'll get a new president. But he already endorses the, the position of Biden on this because they don't believe it and have confidence in the principle 
principles of liberty and the principles of the marketplace. So this is this is the whole. This is one reason why we have to continue to expose uh, as much of the truth that we can find and verify it. And uh, right now, you know, it's everywhere. Look at what they're trying to do with uh, uh, X. They want to take him off the off the air. One thing that came out of that nonsense and accusation back in 2016 and 17 is they they took RT off. And believe me, I've been interviewed on RT a long time, uh, you know, for many years, and of course, uh, no longer, because uh, that's considered, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, not a good thing because they, they lie, cheat, and steal. But the thing of it is, they exaggerate on one side, they ignore the other, and then they try to turn it into saying, well, if you don't do whatever the government tells us to do, especially when it's bipartisan, then you must not be a good American. Chris? <laughs> Excellent, Dr. <laughs> Paul. I'll finish up uh, with my closing thoughts. Uh, the American people, myself included when I was younger, we've all been conditioned to believe that freedom is democracy, that the two are the same, when they're clearly not. We've lost our freedom, and uh, people have been voting all this time. Uh, that's, you know my property, my liberty, your property, your liberty should not be up for a vote. That means your liberty is not secure at all because they'll just vote to take it away from you. And that's exactly what has been done. We've watched our government, which was limited at first, become the biggest in the world, you know, th through voting. You know, it's obviously not freedom, but people still, they're like stuck in this rut. They believe that this is it. If you have anything beyond this, you have tyranny, and that's it. Those are the only options. And uh, you mentioned Dr. Paul Elon Musk and X, and Elon Musk, boy, what a uh, service to humanity this guy is providing by providing free speech. But Elon Musk is, too, stuck in the democracy and freedom thing. He tweets about it all the time. Freedom and democracy, freedom and democracy. Meanwhile... Kamala Harris, who was elected vice president, is saying that if she's elected, that democracy, if she's elected again, she's going to go after X and freedom of speech. And Elon Musk is still freedom and democracy. Harris is telling him, I'm going to eat your lunch if I'm elected. You know, and this is the rut people are in. They can't think outside of, you know, maybe this democracy thing is not working to preserve freedom. She's going to take it away. And this guy poured $40 billion heroically into saving Twitter. So what we have today is not what was initially created. This is not what the founders made. This was changed over many years to become what it is today. And it would be healthy and wise to start thinking about how do we protect our property, our freedom, and make it so that it cannot be voted away by anyone. Very good. You know, there's... Uh a lot of evidence that our government is very much involved in internationalism and picking and choosing the dictators around the world. And we spend a lot of money and uh, we spend a, lo a, lot of, a lot of our tax money, take it from the people and it's stolen. And then it's given to the people who make uh, weapons and, and, and support a policy that is, is so dangerous. But you know, I think that uh, a country does have a choice. I think there's always going to be activities and I think the country, our country, especially in the early years, had a, had a pretty precise understanding of the difference between tyranny under the British versus a, a liberty that uh, was proposed by Locke and Jefferson. And there was a big difference. But the, the conflict remains. It's been there for throughout history. And people do. Uh, one, one side will be more likely supporting truth and the other side just supporting power and de domination. Now, I think that uh, right now we see all this activity, uh, you know, and all, all the advertisement and the campaigning and all that there, I, I can divide it in, in two things. They'll never be precise because they're, they're big and they involve a lot. I think one side, basically, their goal is promoting liberty. 
I would put this program and our the people work here in that position because we have a precise understanding of what personal liberty is all about. And it's not pure democracy. That's the dictatorship of a majority that aren't really very fair minded when it comes to civil liberties. Uh, the other side of, it, of the coin is, are the authoritarians. They say, quit messing around confusing us with the truth. We really get annoyed by that. You're trying to embarrass. And you're, a, you're a bunch of people who, who just don't love their, your country and this sort of thing. But they have, uh, you know, a, a belief in themselves, which is good to have a belief in yourself if you think you're on the right track. But they have a belief in themselves that they know what's good for everybody else, how people should live, how they should spend their money, how, to, how, how, to, how much money should we steal from the taxpayer to go and pick and choose the people around the world, which is impossible. We don't have the moral or the monetary authority to do this or the constitutional authority to do this. So I, I, I know it's uh, simplistic to say you're either for liberty or authoritarianism. Uh, it's modified by the sake that nobody knows what perfect liberty is all about because we're all human beings. And we don't, uh, uh, <coughs> everybody has a, seems like they have a little bit of authoritarianism in themselves. And, they, and the people who really support it are the believers that they they can substitute all this notion about the moral benefits of telling the truth or not. So I think that when we do this, it makes it easy, and for me at least, to pick and choose and uh, say, boy, you know, in politics, what are you going to do? What are you going to do about our troops in, in the Middle East? Well, and, and throughout the world, and when we were in Vietnam and all these things, is that's very complex. I know, I know, uh, I know what you want to do, Ron, but holy man, that that's not going to happen. But my answer is not complicated. We, with ideas and weapons and troops and money, we have marched in to all these countries and have caused havoc. We have not solved the problems of the world, nor the, nor the needs of the American people. And the needs are having freedom and for people to make up their own mind and their own decision. So I think there's a big difference between the two. And that's why on our program here, we continue to promote the cause of liberty because we believe it is the road to peace and prosperity. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.